So we have got this question here. So we need to find the line of invariant points and the invariant lines of the matrix 2, 1, 2, 3. So first of all, let's define what each of these each of these terms actually mean. Well, what is a line of invariant points? OK, let's figure that out. So a line of invariant points. Well, let's have a look at a, uh, a transformation first. OK, so let's say we have a transformation um, which was a reflection in the line y is equal to x, okay? So this is the line y is equal to x, and this was our transformation. So any point was being reflected um, on the line y equals x, okay? Did not mean to do that. Did not mean to do that again. <laughs> okay, so I, I hope we can all agree that... Um, if a point lies on the line, so let's say this point here, let's call that like 2, 2, okay, that's going to be <coughs> on the line y equals x, then after the transformation has been applied, 2, 2, that point there is going to just map onto itself, because, you know, we're doing a reflection like this, this point here would map onto this point here, however, if the point is actually on the line, then it's not going to be it's not going to move at all because it's on the line of reflection, and that's true for any point on this line y equals x. That's true for any of them. Okay, so and therefore we have just defined a line of invariant points. Okay, so it's just a line in which all the points on it um, map onto themselves after the transformation has been applied. Okay, so let's do that first. So. Find the line of invariant points and the invariant lines on the matrix 2, 1, 2, 3. So we're going to find the line of the invariant points first. So let's let's have a go. So let's call this question A. Right. Well, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to write down the matrix M. So 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Now, um, sort of mathematically speaking, what we just described here, a point mapping onto itself, is going to look like this. We are going to map any point x, y onto itself x, y. Or I guess you could write it sort of like this. x, y, like that. So uh, this, sort, the, these, this sort of point here, this x, y coordinate, uh, maps onto itself after the matrix M has been applied to it. So that is just, that's just basically saying what we, what we figured out uh, previously. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to expand this, um, these two, these two, uh, this matrix and this vector here uh, by just timesing the two together. So by doing that, we're going to get 2x plus y. Um, that's, for the, that's for the first row uh, and, for, and, and column. And that's going to be equal to just this x here. So it's equal to x. Then we're going to do the same for the bottom row and then the column. So we've got 2x plus 3y is equal to y, okay? So now we've got these two equations. Here they are. Let's solve for y, essentially. Let's um, rearrange each equation into the form y is equal to something. So if we do that, so I'm just going to move the uh, 2x to both sides. Uh, sorry, move the 2x from the left-hand side to the right-hand side by subtracting it. We get y is equal to negative x. Okay, and that is in the form that we want. Y is equal to something. Um, question, uh, sorry, equation two. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, if I move this y over here, we would be left with two y, and then move the two x over is equal to negative two x, and therefore again, y is therefore equal to negative x. So, um, given that the uh, both equations yield the same equation. Uh, of a line, we can say uh, there is a line, um, or let's just say line of invariant points, um, which is y is equal to negative x. There we go. That would get you your full marks. Let's go down to the next part of the question then working out the invariant lines of the matrix. So invariant lines mean something slightly different. So let's go back up to here and have a look. So 
can I get rid of that? I can. Great. Okay. So an in, uh, uh, an invariant line is a line equation which maps back onto itself after the transformation has been applied. Now, what do I actually mean by that? Let's take the uh, the line y equals negative x just as an example, not drawn accurately. So we've got the line y is equal to negative x. There it is. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can see, but uh, as this is perpendicular to the y equals x line, any point on this line, let's say we took that point there, when we apply the transformation and we, and we reflect it on the line y equals x, it's going to land back on the line. It's going to land back on the line y equals x, uh, the line it started on, essentially. And so what, we, what, we're, what we're saying here is that any point we choose on this line maps back onto the line it started on. And that therefore defines a invariant line. So it's, it's, it's an equation of a line that sort of maps onto itself uh, after, the, after the transformation has been uh, completed. So what do we actually mean by that at, like mathematically? Okay, So it's very similar to the previous one. So we can start with a matrix M. So we've got 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay. And what we're going to do is we are going to times it by x and y. And that's going to be equal to x dash and y dash. Because we're saying that the, this point here, this x dash and this y dash, aren't the same coordinates as this x and y. Because they're not going to be, are they? If we started uh, at this point here and we, and we did the transformation, then it's going to end up on this here. It's going to end up on the line. But it's not the same point, is it? So... We're, so we're basically saying that they are two separate points. Okay, now here's the sort of bit that you need to remember. Um, we know that the equation of a line is y is equal to mx plus c, don't we? Okay, and um, you don't really need to know why, but what you do need to remember is that we substitute this equation where we see this, this, this y uh, value right here, okay? So what that's going to look like is it, it's, it's going to look like this. We've got 2, 1, 2, 3. X stays as it is, but we're replacing this Y with this Y here. So this is going to be MX plus C, like that, okay? And that's equal to the same thing again, X dash and Y dash. That's all we need to remember. You, you, write, out, you write out this starting bit, and then you replace the y with mx plus c. Or if it asked you for an equation, uh, if it asked you for the invariant line in the form y equals mx, then you wouldn't have that plus c. Um, but in this case, we're finding, we, we don't know what form the line's going to be in, um, apart from that it's going to be in mx plus c. Okay, so uh, moving on. What do we do from here then? Well, we do the same thing as, as we did last time. We, we sort of, we multiply out these two this this ma this this matrix here and this vector here, okay. So in doing that, we get two x plus m x plus c is equal to x dash, okay. And then if we do the the bottom uh, the bottom row, we've got two x plus three lots of m x plus c is equal to y dash. Now, I'm just going to expand that out a bit. 2x plus 3mx plus 3c is equal to y dash. Okay, so now we have got these two equations here. We've got an equation for x dash, and we've got an equation for y dash, okay? What we do now is we take a look at the equation y dash is equal to mx dash plus c. Because this is going to be the equation of the, of, of, of the line at the new point. But is we we so and then we're just trying to find well which which values make that true such that it started on that same line okay so we're going to take a look at the equation uh, y dash is m x dash plus c and what we're going to do is we're going to substitute each of these equations here so this um, if I go into red so we're going to substitute this x dash and this y dash into this y dash here and this x dash here. So what that's going to look like is, it's going to look like this. So the y dash turns into 2x plus 3mx plus 3c. 2x plus 3mx plus 
3c. And that's equal to this m here. m times by x dash was 2x plus mx plus c. So 2x plus mx plus c, like that. Um, and then we've got this plus c here, plus c. Now, if we expand a bit, we've got 2x plus 3mx plus 3c is equal to 2mx plus m squared x plus mc plus c. So this is everything expanded, okay? Now, some people might tell you now to rearrange the equation in, in, in you know, a particular way. I think that's just a bit of an unnecessary step, to be honest. All you need to do now is compare coefficients. So we're going to have a look at all of the coefficients of the x terms, okay? That's the first thing we're going to do. So in doing that, we've got, well, we've, on this side, we've got a 2. We've got a plus 3m here. And then that's equal to, on this side, we've got 2m. And on this side here, we've got m squared. Okay, that's all the coefficients of the x. Now what we're going to do is uh, solve this equation for m, essentially. And if you do that, you should get 0 is equal to m squared minus m minus 2. And if we're solving this quadratic, m is equal to 2 and m is equal to negative 1. Okay, so all we did was we rearranged this equation here. Uh, into a quadratic that we know how to solve, m is equal to 2 and m is equal to negative 1. Right, we're nearly there. So we're going to use these two values now. So m is equal to 2 and m is equal to negative 1. The next thing we need to do is we need to compare the coefficient of the constants. So we've got 3c here. We've got mc here and c there. So we've got 3c is equal to mc plus c, right? Okay, um, and what we, so this is sort of like the, the sort of base equation that we're going to substitute our value of m into. So we've got 3c is equal to 2c plus c, and that implies that 3c is equal to 3c, which in other words means any value of c satisfies this equation. Okay, satisfies the equation. Uh, which means that um, instead of getting a number for c, we're just going to have a plus c. Let's have a look at when m is negative 1 now. So we've got 3c is equal to, and now we're going to replace our m with negative 1, so negative c plus c, which is just, that's just 0, isn't it? So 3c is equal to 0, or c is equal to 0, in, in, in other words. Next, we're going to write our equations of the invariant line. So we're, we're done. Okay. So our first one, y is equal to, uh, well, what was the first value of m? It was 2. So 2x. And what was the corresponding c value? It was just plus c. That's our first one. The next one. Our m was negative 1, so we've got y is equal to negative x. And what was our plus c? Well, when m was negative 1, our c was 0. So we're not going to add anything. It's just going to be y is equal to negative x. And those right there are our two invariant lines. So we're saying that any line of the form 2x plus c, where c can be any number, um, makes a uh, invariant line. Okay, And basically what that's saying is that uh, let's say that the matrix represented um, the line y equals, oh, it would be y equals a half x or something, wouldn't it? But let's say it was y equals x just for now. Basically, we're saying that uh, our y equals 2x plus c is any line that's perpendicular to the line that we're reflecting on. Okay, so it could be this one here or this one here. So our plus c would be there, or there, or there, or there. It could be any value, okay? And hence, that is how you find the, yeah, the equations of the invariant lines. Thank you for watching.